Okay, last election with this guy. I swear. After six election wins, Robert Menzies and the coalition as a whole were very concerned about their prospects of winning the next election. They had barely retained government after the 1961 election and now only held a two-seat majority in the lower house. Due to their slim majority, the coalition found themselves having to make concessions to the Democratic Labour Party in order to gain their support in the Senate. This saw the Menzies government give millions of pounds in the form of aid to private Catholic schools after several of them closed down due to a lack of funding. This caused a debate in Parliament. Despite being a Catholic himself, Labour opposition leader Arthur Corwell opposed the funding policy believing that private schools should rely entirely on their own self-funding. Catholic school fundings wasn't going to be the only policy affecting this election. Another would be the establishment of a communications facility by the United States, near Exmouth, Western Australia. This station would allow both the United States and Australia to communicate and coordinate their navies anywhere within the Indian Ocean and West Pacific. The establishment of such a base came with much controversy due to the sovereignty implications as Australia would be letting a foreign power use its soil to conduct its military. A military, I might add, with nuclear capabilities. While the coalition supported the establishment of the facility, the Labour Party was divided. In March 1963, the Labour executives would host a conference in Canberra to decide the party's stance on the facility issue. Corwell and his deputy Gov Whitlam would be summoned to the conference. However, since neither of them were members of the executive, they would wait in the lobby of the venue before being summoned to hear the verdict. The two were then captured by journalist Alan Reid, who published a photo in the Daily Telegraph showing the two waiting for the verdict outside the conference room. In his article, Reid claimed the Labour Party was ruled by 36 faceless men, who were neither elected nor responsible to the people of Australia. This article would immediately be seized by the coalition and used as a political weapon to attack Corwell and the Labour opposition. And with Corwell on the defensive, Menzies took the initiative to call another early election for the 30th of November 1963. The Labour leader was facing other problems aside from the Daily Telegraph article. Corwell was finding his public popularity declining. His opposition to the Catholic school funding had made him very unpopular in his own Catholic community, to the point where during a mass Corwell was attending at St Francis Xavier Cathedral, the opposition leader would sit through an entire sermon on the sinfulness of voting for Labour. He also lost the support of the Sydney Morning Herald, who went back to supporting the coalition. The final nail in the coffin for Corwell's campaign came when current US President John F. Kennedy was assassinated just days before the election. Corwell misheard a statement that Menzies somehow held the ALP responsible for the assassination of Kennedy, which led Corwell to issue an angry press statement to accusations never made. This election would also see the QLP merge with the DLP, strengthening the breakaway party and giving it a united nationwide presence to push its agenda. And the winner was... Yet again, Robert Menzies won, picking up 10 seats to hold 72, thus giving the coalition a comfortable 22-seat majority in the lower house. Corwell's Labour seat count was again reduced back to 50 seats, and for a seventh time in a row they would remain in opposition. The result of this election led to calls for Corwell to resign, as his unpopularity as leader was believed to have been the cause of Labour's loss. His deputy Goth Whitlam would lead these calls, however Corwell refused to step down, citing that Evatt had three election attempts and thus he should have three attempts as well. Meanwhile, on the other side of Parliament, the coalition was debating the future of their leader as well. A month after the election, Robert Menzies turned 69 years old, thus becoming the oldest Prime Minister in Australian history. And at such an old age, discussions began whether Menzies should retire from Parliament and pass the role to someone younger. As for the DLP, despite the United Front, the party's first preference count dropped by over 1.2%, leaving them with 7.44% of the popular vote and no lower house seats. Fun fact, this election was the first election in which Indigenous Australians could finally vote nationwide, after amendments to the Commonwealth Electoral Act allowed Aboriginals to vote in Western Australia, Queensland and the Northern Territory. While they had already been eligible to vote in all other states and territories, this amendment would not make voting compulsory and Indigenous turnout in elections would continue to be low. Due to Menzies calling another early election, the Senate and the Lower House would yet again fall out of sync, and for the next decade, the Senate and the Lower House elections would happen separately. Come back next time for the election of 1966.